The Chicago Yacht Club Race to Mackinac, presented by Wintrust, is back for the 113th year of competition. Sailors begin to flood the docks of the Chicago Yacht Club as they prepare for the adventure ahead. Tradition, adventure, or simply the desire to be first across the finish line. The Mac draws every sailor to it for different reasons, and this year is no different. I think part of it is just traditions. So my parents said, all right, great, first time you can do the Mac is when you're 10. So it was a, for three or four years, like as soon as I turned 10, I'm doing the Mac. So now every year, it's like, well, the Mac is July 23rd, first thing on the calendar. Everything else gets kind of shaped around it. It's the only thing I really take time off for in the summer, and it's, it's the highlight for sure. The one thing about the Mac is really it's, it's the bonding on the boat. And in that bonding, the fact that it happens with such beautiful sunsets and sunrises. It's the hospitality, to be honest. I mean, Chicago Yacht Club rolled out the red carpet for us. I, I've been lucky enough to sail with a lot of other you know, big names. All of them talk about coming back to the Great Lakes, to sweet water sailing. The cruising division boats are the first to set sail for Mackinac. Back at the Yacht Club, the racing division enjoys one last party in Chicago before their start in the morning. The Windy City lived up to its name with a sporty start for the racing division. But these conditions will seem mild compared to what Mother Nature has in store for the racers overnight. I think that was the most rain I've had in 34 Max combined. It was definitely the most lightning I've had in 34 years combined. And we had wind the whole time. Able to stay out in front of the storm the entire race, Whitehawk is the first boat to finish at the Round Island Lighthouse at 6 o'clock Sunday morning. Whitehawk does not have the island to themselves for long, with the first racing boats arriving soon behind them. Anyone who was tracking the race had their eyes on Natalie J and Heartbreaker. We were battling uh, Heartbreaker um, the whole time we were out there. I don't think we were ever separated by more than a mile or two. And as I said to Bob, I said, you know, you make us better and we make you better. And it was, if you slack off at all, Bob's going to get you. 
and if he slacks off, uh, we're going to get him. You know, we saw 69 knots, but the, the lightning, the rain, the breeze, it just never stopped. It was, it was amazing. I mean, that's what tailboat racing is all about. You know, that's what makes it different than most sports. Is the playing field changes all the time. That's what makes it super interesting. Honestly, all winter long, you think about, I want a Mac race with a big storm, and you gotta be careful what you wish for. It was just an epic voyage, and uh, the very end didn't work out the way we wanted. It was such a close, hard, hard fight, but the experience itself was, oh, you know, would have could have yourself, but just the memories of going in that weather and, and hammering were so great. With the Mackinac Bridge in sight, the remaining boats are met with a stunning sunrise to end their voyage from Chicago. The early arrivals gave the sailors time to rest up and enjoy Mackinac Island before Tuesday's awards celebration at Mission Point. The 113th year of America's Offshore Challenge is in the books, leaving sailors counting down the days until they get to race the waters of Lake Michigan once again. <laughs>